Hi guys, today we're going to replace the uh, IWE actuators on this 2013 F-150. Uh, basically IWE is Ford's integrated wheel ends and uh, the way they work it's actually three pieces. Uh, one piece is on the hub side and it's a spline wheel, we'll call it a gear. Um, and there's also an exact match spline wheel on the axle side. Uh, they don't touch. Um, the piece that pulls it all together is this third piece and it's a ring that fits on the outside of them and can freely slide over them. When it's slide <clears throat> or in place halfway over the axle and the hub side, it locks them in. Uh, when you have vacuum, it pulls it over onto the hub side only and they're free and that's how it works. So when your engine is not running and you park, every time you turn off your engine, it's going to push the spline wheel, this third piece, over onto the axle. So the front hubs are going to be locked in whether you're in four-wheel drive or not. When you turn the engine on and it draws vacuum, it sucks it over onto the hub side and puts it in, well, unlocks the wheel, which is what you would want in two-wheel drive. So uh, I've tested this one and I know that they're not working correctly because um, if you take the, the whole front wheel off of the ground and you rotate it and you watch your axle, um, your axle should be spinning if the engine is not running because it's engaged. Um, there's no vacuum and the spring has pushed it over onto the axle and the wheel so it's locked in and that's normal. When you turn the engine on and you draw vacuum, what you should see is when you rotate the wheel, if you watch the axle, the axle shouldn't be spinning. In my case, it's spinning in all cases, so I know that the actuators aren't working. So one of the things that you're going to need that I would highly recommend, you don't have to have this, but if you really want to ensure that it's working, just spend the $20 and buy one of these uh, vacuum pump kits. You just squeeze it and it pumps it up. You connect this tube to your down tube that connects to the solenoid. Right where my hand is here is the solenoid. So in the cab, when there's a the little knob in there that turns it from two wheel to four wheel and when you turn it to four wheel it actually turns off the vacuum at this solenoid and that's what causes it to push that ring onto the axle side and lock in the front axles. So you can emulate that uh, without even turning the engine on and off with a vacuum pump. So you just hook this onto your down tube that goes down to your actuators. It's a rubber tube that goes down to each wheel pump it up with vacuum and watch and see what it does. And you'll see how I use this in the video. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I am not going to belabor how to take apart this whole front end because there are a million videos on it. But essentially what you do is uh, you take apart this tie rod end, kind of have to uh, beat it loose. I, I put this nut on backwards upside down so it doesn't damage the threads and then I take a, a mallet and I tap it up and it'll come loose. The other one that you take loose is this upper control arm which mates to this uh, upper part of your knuckle here. You have to beat on that one pretty good. You're not going to break anything. Just keep hitting it and uh, it'll come apart if you don't have a puller. But you can watch tons of videos on that. And then you pop the little cap off of your a uh, little axle uh, nut there comes off real easy. It's only torqued at about, I think, 20 foot pounds, so it shouldn't be very tight. And then when you let this, oh, the other thing is don't forget to uh, disconnect all of your brackets here. This guy here, this guy here, and any of these little plastic clips holding it in because you want this to not be in a bind or you'll mess up your brakes and that other stuff. And then uh, also disconnect your this thing here. Okay, so after moving this out of the way, I was able to slide the old actuator up and then remove, slide the axle over and sort of wrestle it out there. And uh, this is the old one that came out of it. And uh, it doesn't even have all the parts in it. The gear is missing and the outer plastic plunger ring thing is gone. Because here it is inside the wheel like that, that's broken off. And then inside here, I can see here is the actual actuator ring and it's actually in good shape. Um, it doesn't look like the teeth are worn on it, or they're worn on it. They may be worn down a little bit actually now that I look at it, but I'm just gonna replace this whole thing here. All right, 
So the next thing I'm going to do is go in here and clean all the grease and anything that's in there before I put it back together. And most importantly is this piece around here. I'm going to clean all that stuff up because that's what your actuator fits up against and you want that to be nice and clean uh, and tight. People say that you want that clean and tight so it makes a seal for your vacuum, but I don't believe that may be the case. I'm not exactly sure because I think these things work uh, independently. Um, it's a self-contained unit, so I think the vacuum holds whether, regardless of how this thing is made of here, but I'm going to test that out and see. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take <clears throat> my axle grease here. I'm not going to put too much in here. I'm just going to put enough. The new actuator already has grease in it. And if you put too much grease in here, you end up creating a lot of pressure where things don't fit together. So you don't have to completely fill it up or anything. You just want to put enough on the surfaces. So I will do that and put this one back together and then we will test it. Just so you can get a good feel for how this actually works, I've taken the new one and I've connected up the vacuum line to it. And I'm going to test it by disconnecting the uh, solenoid here. <clears throat> so this is where it was connected. I pulled that off, plugged this into my vacuum pump here. And watch what happens. I'm going to pump this thing up, but importantly, watch what happens to the actuator. See it suck in? All right, that would be taking it into two wheel drive. And when I release the pressure, you see it pop back out. So that's actually how it works. And <clears throat> that shows you that <clears throat> this thing works by itself as a unit. Um, some people talk about cleaning this outer ridge here to prevent leaks, but that has nothing to do with the seal and the in terms of vacuum. Um, it's good to clean it just for grease and things like that, but that's not what's holding vacuum. It's self-contained inside the actuator itself. The easy way to test it. So we'll put it back together and then we're going to do a real test by spinning the wheel and <clears throat> making sure it engages properly and that the splines line up. Okay, the final test here. So uh, got it almost put back together. I, I still need to tighten down the upper control arm and the tie rod here, but um, I basically have it in place and I've got the uh, axle nut is tightened to about 20 foot pounds and the way you test it is right now I have vacuum load on it with my vacuum pump up top at the solenoid so it's holding pressure and that means it should be in two wheel drive so when I rotate my wheel here like this the axle shouldn't spin and as you can see it is not spinning so it is in two wheel drive so then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to disconnect my pump, relieve the vacuum pressure, and now when I rotate this wheel, it should engage and turn the, the axle, which you can see it is turning the axle. Okay, so that means it's operating like it's supposed to. So I can tighten these back up and move on to the other side. Okay, so we've taken her for a test drive and uh, everything is working uh, properly. Uh, one thing that occurred to me was uh, the fact that you can put these vehicles in four-wheel drive as you're going down the road at over 30 miles an hour. So now that you know how this actuator system works and that gear that's sliding over both of those spline pieces, the axle and the hub, how does that actually happen without destroying those gears? And uh, the answer is relativity. So the way that it works is when you're going down the road at two wheel drive, your front axles are not spinning. Um, so if you were to try to slide that gear um, over at that point, it would be a disaster and they would grind. So it turns out that that's not the way it works. What happens is when you put it in four wheel drive, there's two phases. The first phase is that your transfer case goes into four wheel drive, which engages your front axles. So now your front axles are spinning at the same revolution as the back axles. Um, which means because all four wheels are spinning at the same time, 
the, from the perspective of the wheel, the axle is turning at exactly the same speed, so it looks stationary. So no matter how fast you're going, because the axle and the wheel are turning at the same speed, if they're able to look at each other, they see each other as stationary. And so that's why that actuator ring is able to slide over onto the axle uh, without any damage to the gears. So uh, just a little piece of information. Uh, now that you know how actuators work and how to replace them, uh, you can do this yourself. It's relatively easy. So uh, good luck on this and uh, thanks for watching.